Hey guys, welcome back to another How To Use with Sonic Academy. My name's Buff Monkey, and in this video we're gonna have a look at a plugin called Grain Space by Audiority. That's quite an unusual little plugin. Um, what it does, it's a granular effects processor, and it takes an incoming audio signal and allows you to split it up and um, play it back in various different ways. Now, what we're gonna do in this first video is have a look at the user interface, which we'll get started with right now. And at the top left here, we've got a randomize button. So if we click the randomize button, um, it will set random values for each of the controls on the interface itself. Now, my opinion is this is quite useful. Usually in effects plugins, you don't get um, very good results with this, but for granular plugins, it's actually quite useful because the effect you get on the output is very much dependent on the relationship between all of these dials and on the incoming audio signal. So there's no real right way of using these controls and these effects. So having a randomized function can be quite useful. The next dial the next button along is the, uh, it's like an undo feature. If you click this button, it allows you to revert to the last saved version, um, which is also quite useful to have on the front of the interface here. Then moving on to the preset browser, it allows you to, if you click on the middle window, it allows you to pick from all the included presets and you've also got left and right arrows to go through the presets one by one. Let's just get back to initialize. And then you've got pretty self-explanatory save function allows you to save to a specific path. And you've also got delete preset function as well, which is unusual to have on, on the user interface, but it's there if you want to use it. Uh, moving down to the next row, we've got the mode selector. You can use grain space in stereo, in mono, or a kind of mid-side um, processing as well, which allows you to process the difference between the left and right channels. And then here we have the LFO control. So you can choose the LFO shape, the LFO rate, and also the, dest the destination of what the LFO is going to affect. Now from here, I'm just going to skip down to the LFO section here. The LFO section is in red and the LFO itself is in you, uh, sorry, bipolar mode by default. So you can affect the LFO positively or negatively. Now, if you click on the plus symbol here, that sets the LFO to unipolar mode. So it's only gonna go, it, it's, it's gonna work from a specific value up and back to that specific value or down and back to that specific value. It's not gonna kind of deviate up and down from that value, if that makes sense. Um, and then we've also got dials that are hardwired to randomize the size of the grain and the pitch of the grains. So let's go back to the grain controls. All the knobs in yellow are to control the um, grain parameters. So the first knob is fairly self-explanatory. It's taking incoming audio and chopping it up into grains or little, little um, audio snippets. And this dial allows you to adjust the grain size from 16 milliseconds up to 500 milliseconds. So that's the size of the audio snippet that you're gonna be working with. The next dial along allows you to set the distance between each grain. Um, so you can get them to overlap or become more kind of a, a static sound. Uh, and this is something you have to listen to the incoming audio and decide where you want this dial based on what's coming into the plugin. It's not something you can say, right, this is a good setting for X sound. This is a good setting for another sound. It just doesn't really work like that with granular plugins. And oh, by the way, double click on each knob sets it back to default. Next dial along, we have pitch, which is self-explanatory. So the, the pitch of each grain or snippet of audio can be um, set up or down two octaves, a uh, semitone at a time. So if you want to have the um, granular effect, say a perfect fifth, you set that to seven semitones or you can set it to an octave above or an octave below. Again, it depends on what you want to do and it depends on the incoming audio. Now this is a simple feedback um, parameter. And if you increase the feedback, you can get a uh, like a shimmer, like those shimmer um, plugins that you get. So you can have a nice kind of evolving textural sound. It, you have to be careful though, because if you whack this up too high, you're gonna get too much feedback and it will get very, very loud. The next dial along is a freeze function. And by default, this is switched off and you can turn it around so that it's on. And what this does is it starts processing the audio already inside the plugin rather than what's coming into the plugin. So you can almost get a looped um, effect. Like you, you, 
it's similar to the way some of the reverb um, plugins work, where they will freeze their reverb tail rather than carrying on processing incoming audio. And you can also keep twisting this dial around to have the freeze algorithm work to uh, the tempo of your door, which may or may not give you the results you want. Okay, so I'm going to switch that one back off again. Um, coming back down to here, we've got the, um, this is a bipolar effect, so you can set this positively or negatively. This affects the position of the, or the reading position of where the um, plugin looks at the audio. So you can set this forwards or backwards on the audio incoming audio line. And then finally, we've got a stretch algorithm. So um, if you push the dial positive, you can set it positive or negative. Positively, you're going to create like a stuttering acceleration of the signal. This is what it says in the manual. And if you turn it negatively, it's going to cause a reverse type of effect. So you can get some nice reverse effects with that as well. So let's set that back to normal. Okay, so all the yellow knobs are granular effects. These affect the grains themselves. We've already gone over the red dials, which are for the LFO section. And now we're going to come down to the green dials. Um, in the manual, it says post-processing, but actually the smear dial, um, what this does is it smears the incoming audio signal um, with all-pass filters. Uh, so it's not strictly post-processing, but you can affect the incoming audio signal with this. And then you've got a very straightforward grain volume. So this affects the overall volume of the grains themselves. And then this dial here controls the blend between um, the grain signals and the incoming audio. So this is like a wet dry knob. So 100% is 100% grains themselves. 0% is the incoming audio only. So you can balance that anywhere in between. And then finally, we come over to the reverb section. Um, it's very simple. You've got decay time and reverb mix. The, there's no other parameters being adjusted by this decay time. So you're not adjusting the algorithm, the reverb algorithm itself. It's just the decay time. And then you've got the mix. The reverb is really nice sounding. It's like a big ambient textural reverb. So once you've set up your grains, it's worth experimenting with the decay time and the mix to give you the kind of big shimmering effect that you want. So those are all the controls. Um, in the next video, we'll have a look at the sound of the plugin. Uh, based on a couple of different incoming audio sources. So I'll see you there. Thank you. Thanks everybody for watching, commenting and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you find this video super useful, please, we'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.